Hello, I'm Li Chinhua, uh, senior lecturer in EDUHK in the Department of International Education and Lifelong Learning. I'm Hansen, and I'm a final year student studying Bachelor of Arts in Liberal Studies Education. I'm Sam. I am the year three student of BLSD program in the EDUHK. Dr. Lee, can you tell us something about the programs that you've organized in recent years, um, which are designed to enhance global awareness among the students? Yes, um, thank you, Bob. Um, I started my um, uh, awareness of uh, our students need to know more, to open their heart to the world, to oversee experience uh, from very early onwards, uh, especially from uh, 2014. I started a study tour to Taiwan to see uh, the alternative schools there. Our teacher education in Hong Kong uh, always expect uh, our teachers know what happened in Hong Kong system. But I think the 21st century uh, school teacher should know more beyond Hong Kong, to know more what happened in elsewhere, so that they can have a global awareness to compare and contrast to understand what's the better benchmark for education. So from that onwards, I organized the other study tours. For example, in 2015, I also uh, organized another um, study tour to Taiwan with another theme called democratization in Taiwan, because we Hong Kong citizens claimed to be no, uh, uh, understanding the Chinese history uh, in uh, primary and secondary school, but we know less or even none about Taiwan in terms of history and context. So as a global citizen and even as a Chinese citizen, we need to know more about Taiwan. So it is what I think we can use the study tour as a very important learning opportunity for us to expose ourselves to uh, the other culture and history. So how do you structure these activities to ensure the students get full value and a better reflection on global issues? I think it is very important to engage our students, especially um, some interested students as early as possible in order to develop their sense of ownership, to have co-organize from day one onwards. So it is uh, my challenge and it is very happy for me to identify some interested students from uh, day one. So it is uh, the first important point. The second is that uh, our uh, students find their partner to form organizing committee so that they can trust each other in order to um, work together, find information, understand how to organize a trip. So that kind of sense ownership developed among themselves. So it is the second point. The third one is that they need to learn much before the trip so that um, logistically speaking, they need to learn how to organize the trip, how to promote, how to recruit, and even how to uh, uh, divide uh, the different tasks amongst those uh, in, uh, recruiter members uh, uh, in the process. So it is a way to learn the leadership skill. It is one thing. The second would be the content issue, that uh, we have different themes in uh, respective uh, the study tour. Uh, for example, I organized a recent uh, study tour to Germany 
it two years ago. And uh, last year, I organized another one uh, with the theme of conflict and uh, peace and conflict uh, in the post Yugoslavian countries and Austria. So that specific themes relate to a very important historical background information, as well as some very important uh, uh, aspects of uh, the culture, the history, the art, or even the particular war that involved. So our students need to know more in advance before they go to the site. So it involves our organizing committee need to engage with members of the students in order to have the group presentation and uh, uh, getting more familiar with the themes and the countries related before they go to the trip. So it is the third point. The fourth point would be during the uh, study tour, our students uh, are divided into teams, into groups, so that they need at the a particular uh, period of the uh, tour uh, and they just organize how to get there, how to uh, uh, brief and debrief what we are going to see and then even the uh, uh, particular historical and cultural backgrounds related or they need to prepare for that learning experience as well. So. Uh, it is point four, relating to uh, uh, we expect each group of students should learn how to lead that part of the trip. Yeah. As a teacher, how effective do you think the study tours have been in arousing the students' global awareness? Well, I think uh, once when you were in the country that uh, we organized the study tour to visit, you are in a very different environment. You speak differently. You see things, you, uh, you can imagine that you are in a very different uh, context. So from day one, from uh, uh, once you wake up from the bed, you are in a very different environment. I think that kind of experience and immer immersed at least for one week would be a very good uh, experience for the particular students that they learn to think, to see, to feel, and to walk differently. And I, and I think that would accumulate their sense of difference and the awareness that they are in a very different cultural context and language context and they need to adapt and they need to find out ways to engage with the diff uh, that kind of context speaking to people ordering food uh, how to uh, ask questions and how to respond how to go to those uh, museum and what to see. It is not easy. And I think it would really contribute to their sense of global awareness. Thank you. Thank you very much. Why did you choose to join the study tours? Well, for me, participating in the study tours is totally different from joining some kind of art tours organised by travel agencies. Because you always have a theme, and you will visit some other places that it is impossible for you to visit in an ordinary uh, travelling tour, just say I can have, then I can use the theme, in particular in the study tool, and after that, I can try to well, have some learning outcomes in a study tool and to study a certain area in a particular place. Just like 
one eye needs to, just like Mr. Lee has already mentioned in the previous part, we went and organized a trip to former Yugoslavia and Austria with the theme of peace and conflict. So instead of just uh, going through some kind of famous tourist attractions, just you're going to visit some kind of mosques, religious facilities or cemeteries that related to historical and political issues that you can help and to learn something through learning and then try to apply it into your current studies or even to increase the content in your basic knowledge. Well, for me, um, actually I have the same reason with Hansen, but I consider more because it's the, um, the study tool. We usually have the particular topics. So for me, uh, when I organize the Germany study tour, um, because I'm uh, because for the usual, you know, when you go to travel agency, they have some kind of similar tours. But mostly the tour will be for you to travel and you just walk around and see everything, see some beautiful views. But you know, in the study tour, we have the uh, the particular themes. So that, like for example, in the Germany study tour. Uh, our topic is history. We want to know the history and the development of Germany so that we spend a lot of time uh, to going to museums. And for example, uh, when we go to Munich, we will also see the concentration camp during the World War II. And also uh, we, get, we have the opportunity to engage and talk to the local people so that we can know more about this country. That is something that, you know, when you go to join the tour in the travel agency, that you can't really have this kind of opportunity to know a country or their culture so deep. And also in the study tour, there are um, several things uh, as a students we can do because as an organizing committee, and then we need to responsible for everything. For example, uh, where to go, the um, and then also uh, we need to be responsible for the food and the transportation as, as well. Uh, because when you go to join the tour in the travel agency, they will do everything for you. You just need to pay the money. That is the consumer culture. But as a student, when you organize the study tour or you as a participant, you join the study tour, you need to be responsible for something. For example, like, the, like Mr. Lee mentioned before, um, the participant, they need to organize into different groups uh, so that they need to be responsible for the certain... certain um, the schedule for the in the study tour, but as uh, also as a uh, organizing committee, you know we have to be responsible for everything for the students. So I think that is a very good learning uh, experience for students to organize everything, not just um, to develop the co uh, global awareness of uh, inside the tour, but also you can learn other skills. For example, like cooperating with others, something like that. I think that is a very good uh, development for the students. Global awareness is a very big term, but when I listen to you, it sounds as if doing the practical everyday logistical arrangements was actually a way of becoming more globally aware of how things are done in different places. Would you agree? Well, I think during the process of organizing a tour, let's say we try to do some kind of logistic arrangement, this is actually um, another, or I can say, alternative chance for you to know global awareness. Because throughout the interactions with the locals, that you will understand there is something different. Different countries will have their own practice and their own customs that you cannot try to use your concept and your mindset. You need to put yourself into other shoes. Just like when I was planning for the accommodation issues or the, the itinerary issues in Bosnia, well, which was one of our destinations in my tour to former Yugoslavia. There are a large population of Muslims in Bosnia and usually they will have their own public holiday on every Friday which is they, they call Juma but for us 
in the Western culture, the day of for us to rest is on Sunday. So let's say if I need to have some conversations with some travel agencies in Bosnia, that I need to be very careful of that. I will try to avoid any important information to deliver it on Friday, but instead, I can do this on weekends. Hmm. I also agree with Hansen's. Yeah, I can give more example when I go to Germany because, like, uh, in a particular, you know, for uh, for both of people, you know, if you know something about Germany, and then you, and then the people will also uh, usually think, you no know, German people, they are always on time. They do things with uh, uh with uh, with orders, yes, very control, control, something like that, yes. And then, um, for example, we know when we go to uh go to like the museum, and then and also we went to the the football stadium in the Bundesliga. So we uh, we have uh, organized a tour for students. So we need to. So we usually, you know, for Hong Kong people, you know, uh, when uh, when we used to ask, uh, yeah, we would like to go to somewhere on. And and in different time and a particular time point and then we sometimes you know for Hong Kong people we might usually lay for like five to ten minutes but you know when we go to Germany you know fun it's totally different you know as a Hansen said you know we can't usually apply our mindset you know when we go to other place in Germany you know the people will usually be very early for example like ten to fifteen minutes so you so you know when you put yourself into that kind of environment like in Germany, so you can't always, you can't be like there on time or late for five to ten minutes because you have to, you have to um, follow the their mindset so that, you know, sometimes we have problems of the time. But yeah, we, we get to know, um, we get to know the German, you know, the people, their personalities during the tour. I think that is something, you know, that is the so-called global awareness because we can, um, experience different cultures when we go to different countries. Yeah, I think that is the interesting things that when we join the study tour. Can you think of any incident that's had a major impact on your global awareness? Sure. Um, let me try to refer to my experience when I was still in Bosnia. Once we stayed in a small town there called Mosta, and accidentally we to seek for some advice from the owner of our hostel that we can visit a cemetery for soldiers working for them, her former Yugoslavian army. And when we arrived there, we, we were a little bit furious because we saw, well, the only thing well, we found is some kind of remains, rubbish, is everywhere and it seems there is there was no maintenance at all in um, the so-called memorial garden so we think this the hostel owner is making fun of us but I try to look for some kind of further information online and I discovered another story because it was a memorial garden to try to uh, show them appreciation from the point of view of the former Yugoslavian government for their soldiers. But once the country collapsed, that's for local Bosnians, they think the memorial gardens was totally meaningless, which is nothing more than a place that is worthless and they can do everything they like in the garden. And then we try to figure out and to have some dialogue with the locals, just like for our taxi drivers, hostel owners, and some kind of locals that are willing to talk with us, that we know what's going on. And we try to ask them one question in particular. How would you think of the former Yugoslavia government? And they think this cool, cruel, and it seems they're not doing something to try to benefit for the Muslim community or the entire Bosnian community. And we tried it and, and after returning back to Hong Kong, we tried to gather some kind of information and we understand 
Actually, the former Yugoslavian government, they launched several massacres during the ruling period and killed a lot of peop innocent people. That, um, even for Mr. Lee and Sam, we, they do share some news from our WhatsApp group established during the tour. Oh, the leader of former Yugoslavian uh, government was being persecuted and launched with death penalty. So just because of what he did when he was still the leader. So well, as a Hong Konger, Eastern Europe con European countries are so far away from us. When, well, when I had never been to the country before, it's just, just small news. But why we have the awareness and why we will pay attention to this small news when the general public has no idea where is Bosnia. I think this is the incident that helped me to uh, consolidate and to foster my global awareness. Well, for me, I have uh, another uh, different example you know, with Hansen, you know, when I go to Germany, I. I have mentioned about we have been to the concentration camp during the World War Two. So when we went, so uh, it was the last two days. I still remember because we went to the concentration camp in the southern part of Munich. It was the the concentration camp. It was held for the for the for the Nazi Germany. They um they put all the Jewish people inside the concentration camp. So uh, which um made me impressed is because you know um the way the Germans reflect their history. Because inside the concentration camps, because I can see that the local people and the government officials, um, they tend to show everything. They tend to uh, to tell the truth to the public of what the Nazi, German, Nazi Germany did to the Jewish people uh, during the World War II. So inside the concentration camp, I, we do see um, everything, every kind of information of uh, what kind of things happened in, inside the concentration camp and how many Jewish people were killed during the regime, under the regime of uh, Nazi Germany. So we do see uh, the, ent the entire environment of the concentration camp and also with the, all the information we would like to see um, inside the concentration camp. So it's different from, uh, from Hansen, you know, uh, what to what he see in the Bosnia, and we do see in Germany that the, even though the concentration camp is something is not good, you know, to way to reflect, you know, the the Germany history. But you know, the the people, you know, uh, and the government and the government, they try to place everything in order, and then try to and try their best to maintain the facilities, so that you know, when uh, when the, even for the for uh, for the foreign tourists and the local people, they can go there, they can really see the own history and then how it uh, reflect to uh, affect to others so it makes me you know to think about compare in um, in Asian countries for example uh, like during the World War two or or doing in the 1970s there are uh, some kind of Asian countries like Japan um, Cambodia and then they have also have committed a uh, war crime or for example they have a concentration camp in their country as well. But you know, uh, compared with Germany, I uh, what I can see is um, they they may not you know have a really a museum or concentration camp to tell the truth to the public. The and then compared with Germany, the way the German people did it really uh, in um, make me reflect a lot of how the people you know to uh, to think about the history and how. We treat, you know, uh, we treat the we the attitude that we have to the real history that we have in the real life. So, based on your experiences, what advice would you give to other students who are thinking about undertaking a study tour? Well, I think they should um, try to leave some concepts of a typical traveling guide tool behind because as you know as sam and i have already emphasized many times already so 
when you talk about those traveling tools, they will bring you to some kind of popular tourist attractions. They are going to introduce some kind of famous shop for you to shop in, to buy some souvenirs. But I think the nature of a study tool is totally different. You need to learn something um, in a con and other places outside Hong Kong. So you need to prepare yourself mentally to tell yourself it is not a traveling tour and you can not do it not only doing something to make yourself feel happy and then you can try to show off your experience to the others once you come back but before that you should know that you must learn something from the tour and before that to facilitate your learning you must try to do some kind of preparations let's say if i am going to or bring some of my classmates to former yugoslavia you know we are going to visit four countries. I'm naming Bosnia in the beginning, Croatia, Slovenia and Austria. So what are the differences between the four countries and what are you able to see, what are their cultures, religions, etc. So you need to make some kind of preparations. Uh, let's say if we arrive there and you're going to visit some kind of galleries or museums, at least you can get the brief idea to know what are you going to see and why you can see something like this. I think not only the, you need to have preparation, but the attitude is very important. Um, like the Hansen mentioned, you know, um, the preparation, because uh, you need to prepare, you know, something, then you need to have some kind of ideas when you, before you go to study tour. And also I think the attitude is important because like for most of people, you know, they have the experience of going to travel. You know, they usually think, you know, uh, like organizing um, the travel schedule is it will be like will kind of easy. But you know, for the study tour, you need to go to uh, join the tour with, uh, with lots of students and also with the supervisor as well. So it's not the easy task because you need, when you organize the tour, you need to think about the, the, uh, the, the travel spot is it related to your uh, to the theme of this tour and then also you need to uh, consider different situations for example the transportations the hostel everything for not just only you you need to think about to all the people so um for ex for example and uh, me as a supervisor you know i also help hansen to uh, to order and the transportation uh, doing the doing the Yugoslav post Yugoslavia and Austria study tour as well. We, we also have found that there are a lot of difficulties because, uh, because of the time and the destination as well. I also have the same kind of problem when we order, when we try to, uh, to order the order transportation thing, something like that in Germany as well. So I think you need to have, uh, you, you can't think, so for me, you know, I, the advice I will give is you can't think it is, is a very easy task. You need be, you need to be uh, considerate to all the uh, to all the co the condition of the other students and also the the condition in the local uh, in the local area as well. Yeah. And then um and then also um the uh, the other advice I will give is um uh, if you have anything, just tell your committee commun uh, committee and your friends and then uh, don't try to f fix every problem by yourself because like st st organize a study tour is not really it's not an easy task you can't uh, you can't be you know do everything by yourself you need to find some help if you have problems and then also uh, communicate with others uh, because this is not your tour it's everybody's tour so you need to cooperate and then uh, try to discuss everything with others so that you know everyone will will be happy, you know, get a please result at the end for the study tour. So I think besides attitudes and um, mentality that Sam and I has really mentioned, I will add two more words for uh, those who are interested in organizing a study tour is um, justification and good temper. Because when you talk, 
I would like to, uh, to elaborate the word justification, that you need to know that you have taken the responsibility to organize a tour. So once you made any decision, that you need to explain it to the others why you would like to do so. I just remember when I was organizing my study tour, that um, the group, which is working for um, our activities in Croatia, they proposed that we can visit a very famous museums that try to display it all them help items that couples left when they broke up. So of course for girls it may be it may sound funny and they will feel very interested to know what is the feeling uh, when they broke up with their boyfriends. But here comes the questions. Why? Once I try to designed my study tool as peace and conflict. What is the relationship with this sport to peace and conflict? So, of course, this may sound an interesting idea, but you need to be very careful to explain the relationship between the study tool and then you need to understand whether it is reasonable to introduce this derangement to the others. And of course, as Sam has already mentioned, there are a lot of difficulties when you are preparing for yourself to help take a study tour. Even though community members, they may be good friends, they may work close to each other, but we will have some quarrels when we are trying to decide everything. We may get angry with each other. So you need to be, uh, have a good temper. You need to know that you need, it is always good. And this is always necessary for you to have a consensus. You need to have a good temper and you need to know the reality is it is pointless for you to quarrel and then to maintain a bad relationship with each other. So it is very important for you to try to ignore these kind of things. Soft problems is always more important than creating or try to neglect any problems. Could you say something about language and you learning German and so on as a result, and how important is it to know something of the language? Mm. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so far, I know, I, me and Hanson, we learn, we are learning German together. So we found that, you know, um, because like, why I would like to learn German is because after I went to Germany, so I found that, you know, um, the German language, you know, usually, you know, um, the people will think, oh, it's really complicated, you know. The, um, Especially yeah. the tenses. The tenses, the yeah, and then the, the alphabet, you know, and also the construction of the word, you know, usually the, oh, with uh, oh, with uh, a lot of alphabet, you know, oh, we found, you know, actually we found that it is interesting. But we found that, uh, for example, like Hansen mentioned, you know, the tenses in German is really complicated. But uh, at the same time, you know, the language can reflect, you know, the personalities and the culture of, uh, of the countries so that, um, you know, uh, even though it is complicated, but I found that, you know, the, the, the sentence structure or the tenses in German language, actually it plays it in different orders. Well, uh, yeah, with a very clear order, even though it's really complicated. We, we also found that, you know, for the German people with the personalities, that, you know, uh, maybe they are very strict. Yeah, and then they may, maybe they are, yeah, they are, they are very punctual, you know, to the time, something like that. But at the same time, you know, we do appreciate, you know, this kind of attitude because like uh, being, being punctual and do things with order. Maybe there are most, maybe there are a lot of people, you know, they don't have this kind of like personalities in their life. So that um, I found that, you know, the German people, they having this kind of personality and then and then the and then the um, culture and the personality can we you can you see the reflection in the language so that i'm really interested to learn more about the language 
and then uh, through the language I can know about their culture and the people personality in that country so that is you know the reason that I'm interested to to learn German that's right because I will I know know a famous saying is always good do in Rome as the Romans do so when we try to learn the language even though as all of you may got a brief idea this the English language proficiency for Germans is quite high. If you try to visit some kind of big cities, just like Munich or Berlin, many people there can speak very good English and we don't have any language barriers. But if we can learn some German, of course, we may not be fluent and we may make mistakes when we are speaking with others in German. But from the point of view of locals or for Germans that they will feel very happy and they will think it is always good for you to learn more about our language. So once you try to learn it, it is an easy starting point for you to communicate or to ask more information from the locals and then this is also another method for you to build up your global awareness. Yeah, I think I think that you know, um, because you know, when once you know when when you try to use the local language to talk to, to the local people, you know they will think you, you know would like that you know they will give you a very good impression because you would because you would like to try to more engage in the local culture. I think you know um, trying to speak with uh, the local with their own languages. Not just only you can uh, build up the global awareness, but you can know more because they were willing to tell you more about their things. Yeah, because you you try to uh, because you try to eliminate the language barrier uh, with them. Even though you know you can use English in other countries, but you know you if when once when you try to use the local language. And then you will get to know more things that when you uh, then you speak English, you know, because they were willing to tell you more. Yeah. 